Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm in Wisborough Green. This is the second part of my following in the footsteps of Walter Wilkinson, the puppeteer who I believe was born in 1888 and died in 1970. And during the 1920s and 30s, he toured around Britain uh, into Sussex, into Wales, into Scotland, into Yorkshire and Devon with a puppet show, a Punch and Judy show, but not the coarse Punch and Judy show that we think of today, a much more refined puppet show. And I think he was influenced from his travels in Europe. But in the 19, I guess the late 20s, early 30s it was, he took a journey through Sussex. Bit of a strange journey because he seemed to not fully grasp the compass points and preferred to wander at will, trying to make a living getting pennies from performing his Punch and Judy show wherever he found an audience, which seems to be rare. Now I've been reading a book called The Sussex Peep Show on my lives and the links I'll put this uh, below. And I'm following, this is the second part of the journey. So as I mentioned, I'm, I'm starting my story in Whisper Green on this episode. In the first episode, he took a journey. Um, he entered Sussex, as he likes to put it, in Rudgwick, which is a few miles that way. Um, and to the sort of, I guess, the northwest. And he makes his way down to Whisper Green. And in, I'll put a link to the video that I did before in which I traced his route to Whisper Green somewhere here in Wisborough Green. I've got the church just in front of me there, a beautiful church which he does make a note of in the book. Um, he performs at the village fete in a farmer's field somewhere around here. Well, after the, the, the um, shenanigans of the village fete, he turns up in the book on the next chapter heading towards Pulborough and he gets through Pulborough and he makes his way to Watersfield and he goes, I think, and looks in Hardham Church. But he didn't really tell us the exact route that he took. But we do know that he preferred not to travel on the roads. He was pushing a barrow, a sort of homemade contraption which contained his tent that he was living in, the booth of the Punch and Judy show and the frame plus all the other paraphernalia that you would need to um, exist for several days on the go. And he was pushing this contraption. Now back in the 1920s there was fewer traffic on the road but he absolutely hated it. He found it abhorrent and preferred to stick to the byways and country lanes. Well, the sun has deemed to bless us with occasional sunshine, which is rather nice. So, um, byways and old lanes. There is a direct route here. If I look on the OS map, you can see that there is this pretty much straight route that goes to Pulborough. And having plotted where he wanted to go in Sussex, he takes his barrow and, and heads off. Now he's with a mate who he calls the uh, utility, as in he is a separate person who's helping him. Um, it's a very disparaging title, but that's what he calls him for a while. Later he's joined by his wife when the utility has to go elsewhere. But for the moment, he is with his mate, the utility, and I think, he doesn't say this in the book, but he says he gets to Pulborough, so I think he must take this track here. There's a public footpath pretty much bang opposite the church and it heads down this way. So I'm going to go on this video and just follow some of it to see some of the sights that Walter Wilkinson and his barrow and the utility may have seen back in the 19, late 20s and 30s when he was doing this.
Oh wow, <laughs> this is rather joyous isn't it? Iron frame across this bridge which is going over a little bit of a stream here which is rather lovely. This would have been here in his day I'm pretty certain so he would have passed this and you can see the joy of uh, getting off the main road being in the countryside trying to get across country without the the road and the, the noise of the traffic and the pollution and all of that which very much appealed to Walter and of course two walkers these days. First part of the track we noticed today is tarmacked but I'm sure back then it was probably just either a muddy or a gravelly drive but uh, what a lovely spot to, to pause although I don't know how fast he was travelling because we don't really get a scale of days. Anyway we'll press on. This route up here is lined with um, just beautiful oak trees and they're of a certain age of course and all around the countryside has these wonderful oak trees. Of course they would have been here a hundred years ago so you can imagine him coming up. Now I'm filming in the autumn in October and he set out his journey in May and he talks about the hawthorn hedgerows. Well these have been clipped and they're, they're turning colour as well of course but back then when he was doing this this would have been an, an ocean if you like or a spray from an ocean of May of the blossom from the hawthorn bushes. It just would have been absolutely fantastic and delightful, complete different contrast to the golden yellows and browns and russets that we have today. I hadn't expected blue skies and wonderful sunshine when I set out this morning. It's absolutely terrific. Past just now this very lovely old barn which of course would have been there when um, Walter passed by and some farm houses which now are probably in the hands of people who've got uh, quite a bit of money and can afford to live in the countryside, perhaps no longer farm labourers by any means. Um, and then passing all of this, other little houses in the countryside uh, peppered about, but not enough for an audience. And then these magnificent oak trees here and the view to the south. We've got some hills, which I think is close to uh, Pulborough, and then beyond we get the South Downs. And all around me, underneath these oak trees, I can hear the acorns falling. They wouldn't have been happening in May in 1930s. Walter's philosophy is interesting. He seems to deliberately avoid towns and major conurbations to perform his show and seeks out very small audiences asking for pennies and he manages to somehow get enough money I suppose to exist. Tramping across the countryside as he did and now me following in his footsteps I start to understand more of his philosophy. You see Walter thought that these captains of industry and the people who worked for the large factories who were chasing um, manufactured mass produced products were mad. He thought it was it was an insane chase. He relished the countryside and nature seeing the wonders in the world around him and being part of it was very much part of his raison d'etre, his reason for, for living really and he felt that the mechanical world 
the mechanical age of automation of new things and particularly the motor car and the charabangs and the, the buses and the, the fume belching lorries were, were all wicked things. But he actually also thought that that would pass, which is a very romanticised notion that somehow progress would be stopped, that having found ways to farm more efficiently, uh, to produce more products quicker and to distribute them easily, that we would draw back to a more country way. And yet, despite all of that, I very much share that philosophy, not so much thinking that it will take a step back, I wish it would, but that the nature that we have, that we have lost in this day and age, thanks to the heavy industrialised farming that we do with the pesticides and the herbicides and the fungicides and the artificial fertilisation, which is killing off the wildlife that he, back then in the 30s, would have seen in abundance and that we are lucky if we catch a glimpse of. The question of gates, styles, fences and things was a question that came up actually during the live, the reading of the book that we did, which as I say I'll put a link in the description. And somebody said, you know, um, he must have had trouble getting his booth and his contraption, his wheeled barrow over these things. And back in the 1930s I don't think that we had perhaps the styles and the narrow uh, footpaths, the delineated footpaths that we do today, because it was only really later, after the war, that places, particularly on the South Downs, where he starts to walk, um, are hampered by the farmers cutting up the land and doing uh, more intensive farming on pasture that had only before been for sheep and had been an open space. You didn't need to have people walk around the field or stop them from going over the field with fences and things because it was literally sheep in hurdles. So I don't think he encountered many but he may have come across some gates and I imagine on more than one occasion there was the question of him and the utility or Winifred his wife at the certain points of having to, if he couldn't open them, get them over somehow. He doesn't mention it so far in the book. In my last video, I mentioned and I passed the Way and Aran Canal from Rudgwick down to Whisper Green and I figured, I wasn't sure whether Walter would have taken the route that I took but it seemed most likely away from the traffic, it's fairly direct and it passed and yet he doesn't mention the old canal. Now, the canal would have been abandoned a hundred years ago, would have probably not had much interest and may even have been dried out. I have now come to a point on my journey where I'm going to stop, um, but I'm crossing the same canal, the Way and Aran Canal, which is looked after by the Way and Aran Canal Trust, and they are 
over many years, I think from the 1970s, trying to put it back into water. And there are stretches of it that are in water, and I think you can take pleasure boats along it, um, although you, you can't actually, I don't think, get a canal boat and moor up yourself. But maybe in the future you will be able to. I think Walter would have approved of the canal system. It was a, a quiet way of life, and you would be taking your industry back then or the end of the industry period you would have been taking your industrial materials let me put it like that in a very quiet and gentle fashion it, it was to be another 30 years before suddenly the pleasure industry would take over those canals and rescue them but it's lovely to stand on this spot here because it's pretty much halfway to Pulbra and in the next video I will pick it up I would just like to say a hello to the lovely ladies I met on this walk a few moments ago. Um, I didn't get them on camera, unfortunately. Um, we had a chat. One of them spotted me and said, you're the bald explorer. That does occasionally happen. I'm thrilled to say it's always a thrill when someone spots me. They were so nice and polite and interested in, in what I was doing. So it, just a quick hello to you. Before I leave it though, before I leave this, and I will pick up the point and continue the walk in the next, um, in the footsteps of video, um, I'm going to just stroll down and, and have a look at the state of the canal as it is today. Well, it certainly looks a little bit weedy on this section, the uh, way path south, I think they call this one and I'm guessing that's the way north, um, W-E-Y, as in the river way, the route to the way, and it must circle up round there and go on the way to Rudgwick. So he could have come along that way and followed the towpath. I don't know how easy that would have been with his barrow, but I get the feeling that he perhaps went across more direct, directly from Wisborough Green to Pulborough. But it's lovely to see it, and the bridge looks pretty new. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't um, heard the live readings of the book or you want to check it out yourself, it's The Sussex Peep Show by Walter Wilkinson. It's a fantastic book. It's probably out of print, but I'll, as I say, I've left the link so you can listen to the live and the discussion that we have when we do it. I do do a, a live reading pretty much every day, weekdays, um, at four o'clock on the Board Explorer. So there may be a book there that you want to follow me on. And if I can follow in those footsteps, I think it's, it's just great. It gives me an excuse, A, to get out and B, to see some of the countryside and follow in some of the amazing people who've written some wonderful books. Anyway, that's it for today. Follow, like and subscribe, thumbs up if you can, and maybe consider becoming a patron, support what I do, a few pennies my way, really helps me continue to make the videos and hopefully keep you entertained at the same time. I'm now going to go back and have a cup of coffee and uh, I'll pick up this walk from here more or less the next time. Take care, bye-bye, bye-bye.